Colossians chapter 1. Most scholars feel like that uh, the church in Colossae, much like the, the town, was a, a little place. It just wasn't that big of an area. You kind of find it like a bump in the road at the end of a dirt road. I was listening to my son, uh, my uh, nephew rather, talk, and uh, they were on some activity some time ago, and they were asking if were all these different people from, I forget, maybe Colorado or something, and he said, uh, Chattanooga, okay, Chattanooga, we heard Chattanooga, and he said, and then some guy in the back said, Buck Snart, Tennessee, and he said, could he have said Nashville with not so much of an accent, he said, I wanted just to kind of crawl down <laughs> This is Colossae. Where are you from? I'm from Colossae, Asia. You know? It's a small place. Paul was worried for him. Matter of fact, in chapter 2, in verse 1, he says, I want you to know the great conflict I have for you. The word used in, that Paul speaks of in the Greek is agonito, where we get our word agony from. Literally, he's agonizing over them. He's concerned for their safety, for their faithfulness. You know, will this place, way at the end of the road, this little bitty place, will they be able to hold it together? And if that we can all identify with, even if you are from the big city of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Agonizing. And so he writes in chapter 1, verse 9, he says, For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. If you really want to help somebody, and you know they're struggling, and you don't know what else to say, and there's a lot of times we come up with, we don't know what to say, and so we just kind of dodge on by them. Don't dodge. Just say, just want you to know, I, I really don't have words to say, but I'm praying for you. I, and whatever they're struggling with, you don't even have to describe it. They know what's going on. So Paul says, I'm praying for you. And this is what he's praying. That they may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And then also that they may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him. Being fruitful, and he adds to that, in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Now, the only way we can do that or be strengthened in the next part, all these things, is taking in God's Word. There, there is a strengthening factor in there that we have to have. So he says, I've heard about you. I'm praying for you. So, boy, having the Apostle Paul pray for you is a great thing. But doing that for one another is outstanding. And he's praying specifically that they be filled with the knowledge, God's knowledge. You know, we, we can pray a lot that we'll gain that. But we know that studying God's Word, taking it, and not only on Wednesday nights, there's a good start. Sunday morning's another thing. But... In our private times, wherever we're at, if nothing else, just carry a verse with you in your pocket that you can pull out to remind yourself along the way, this is my thought for the day or for the week or whatever it is. I'm going to hang on to that concept or that thing. I'm going to fill my mind with that. Now, there's a great advantage to that. Because if my mind is full with good, spiritual, godly things, then Satan doesn't have much room to get in, and he will, with all that he can, try to do that. And you know that too. He just works on any one of us, and all of us, at any time he can. But if we've got the mind filled up with good things and godly things, and that's what we're talking about, and, and we're talking to one another and saying, I'm praying for this, then we're filling ourselves with what we need. And this is what Paul's talking about. This is what will help them. So Paul says, I'm agonizing, I know that, but I want you to know this is what you need to do to help yourselves. And so he describes that. And 
back through verse and forward down to the end. He'll, he'll go back and he'll say over and over again, you heard. Verse 4, we give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying for you always since we heard, we did not heard of your faith. He goes on. Verse 5, because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the world, which has come to you. And then latter part of verse 6, which has come to you as it was in the world, and bringing you fruit as it was among you since the day you heard and you knew. And verse 7, and you learned. You see, so Paul is basically driving them to the concept, you heard, you heard, you heard, you learned. This is what we got to do in our struggles, in the things that we deal with, as we're praying for one another, we've got to be driving ourselves to the Word and reminding ourselves of where our power is, where our strength is, and where our direction comes from. Because we get way too much influence walking around in this world. And we've got to fill our minds and our hearts with those things. So you're doing good by being here. You do good by doing those things at home and just grabbing those moments. Write down a Bible verse or something. Carry it in your pocket. Even if you never pull it out, guys. You know, sometimes you, know, you just stick your hand in your pocket and oh, there's that piece of paper. What's that? Oh, yeah. That's the Bible verse that says, there it is. Our girls, you know, stick it down there where your car keys are. And you're looking all over. Where are the car keys? There's the verse. Now, where's the car key? There's the verse. So you remind yourself. This is what we're about. Keep at it. Doing a good job. As we close the Devo tonight. If you're struggling, you need prayers, we're here to do that. If your life isn't right with God, then get it right. If you've never committed to Christ in baptism, immerse you for the forgiveness of your sins. Let's do it the right way and for the right purpose. This is the biblical way. Then do that. This is what we learned because of the things we heard. And so we teach them to you. And we pray and struggle with one another. Glad you're here. If you need some help tonight, come down front while we sing this song.